Namaste friends. Today we will talk about science in Sanskrit. Why we are taking this topic? Because some of the people think that there is no science in Sanskrit. So today in that particular video we will discuss about is there any science in Sanskrit or not. So without wasting your time we will start the video. My name is Shubham Verma and you are watching History of Things. If you have not subscribed our channel yet then please do subscribe our channel History of Things so that we can make more videos like that. Now we will come to our topic that is science in Sanskrit. If we ask to the people that name any book of Sanskrit then they would say Ved, Puran or Gita or Ramayana or Mahabharata or they will name Manu Smriti. But is Sanskrit only contains religious texts? The answer is no. Sanskrit was not only the language of religion and literature, it was also the language of several sciences, law, justice, administration, economics, rhetoric, logic and several arts namely music, dance, painting, sculpture, architecture etc. So in short if I wanted to say I would say that Sanskrit is the key of all Indian ancient knowledge. In order to understand that we will take some examples. The first example is from Agastya Samhita. It is a book that is a compilation of work of sage Agastya. In that particular book electricity generation uh, was described. So if I read the translation of one of the shlokas of that particular book it says lumps of gems generate electricity by the union of copper and zinc. So it describes about the electricity generation by use of copper and zinc. So uh, sage Agastya knows how to generate electricity much before when western world have invented it. Now we will take another example of it. That is from Raja Bhoj. Uh, there is a book called Yukti Kalp Taru. In that book ship building was mentioned. And in that particular book Raja Bhoj says that no iron should be used in joining the planks in the bottom of a ship. This exposes the ship to the influence of magnetic rocks in the sea, brings it within the magnetic field leading to its sinking. So he is talking about magnetic field, he is talking about ship building, he is talking about that ocean marine engineering. So that much knowledge was there in ancient India. Now we will come to our next example. That is Vaimanika Shastra. It is very famous all over the world and Maharshi Bhardwaja has actually written that particular Vaimanika Shastra. It is actually a science of aeronautics. That is in that particular uh, Vaimanika Shastra book, he describes about the machines which can fly. That is aeroplanes. So he describes how to make aeroplanes and Shivkar Bapuji Talpade, he was the person who actually did research on his book and he actually constructed the first unmanned aircraft in 1895 that is 10 years before Wright brothers have invented an aeroplane. So it was there in our Indian history books but it was not there in world history books because of the colonization by the British. So we will come to the next example that is Pingal. So there is a Pingala Rishi 300 before Christ. Pingala presents the first ever known description of binary numeral system. Yes friends, binary numeral system is the system in which all the computers are made right now. Computer coding is done in binary system and it was first mentioned in Pingal's books. His discussion of the combinators of meter corresponds to the binomial theorem. Uh, that is he has also discussed about binomial theorem and he has also discussed about Fibonacci number. He called it Matra Meru. So he discussed about binary numeral system, binomial theorem and Fibonacci numbers. So it was about the Pingal Rishi. Now we will come to the next example that is ancient Indian chemistry. Yes friends, ancient Indian chemistry was also very deep and Nagarjuna, Vagbhat, Govindachari, Yashodhar, Ramchandra, Somdeo was uh, one of the scientists or sages who actually invented or who actually discovered several things in ancient Indian chemistry. They have written several books on it called Ras Ratnakar, Arogya Manjari, Ras Ratna Samuchya, Ras Arnava, Ras Prakash, Sudhakar. And they discussed a lot about metallurgy, they discussed a lot about pharma, they discussed a lot about medicinal properties of elements, several uh, herbs and all. So there is a deep knowledge of chemistry was there in ancient India. So it is all about that. Now we will go to the next example that is Bodhayana Sulab Sutra. Yeah, 
what is known as Pythagoras theorem today is already found in Bodhayana Sulva Sutra, which was written several years before the age of Pythagoras. And Bodhayana not only uh, talked about this Pythagoras thing, uh, that is Bodhayana Sulva Sutra, he also talked discovered the value of pi. Yeah, we think that uh, value of pi is discovered by uh, Western people, but it was uh, actually mentioned in Bodhayana's books. So it was also there, that kind of knowledge was also there in ancient India. Now we'll move to the next example, and that is Bhaskaracharya. Bhaskaracharya was the leading light of 12th century. He was born in Bijapur, Karnataka. He is famous for his book Siddhanta Shiromani. It is divided into four sections, Leelavati, Arithmetic, Bijaganit that is Algebra, Goladhyay that is Sphere and Grahaganit that is Mathematics of Planets. Bhaskara introduced Chakravat method or the cyclic method to solve algebraic equations. This method was rediscovered six centuries later by European mathematicians who called it inverse cycle. In the 19th century, an Englishman, James Taylor, translated Leelavati and his and made this work known to the world. So Bhaskaracharya was the mastermind in mathematics and he has discovered actually arithmetic, algebra, uh, sphere and mathematics of planets and cyclic methods and several methods of mathematics. But unfortunately we didn't read about it because of colonization. Now we'll move to our next example that is Kanath. This is very important example friends because most of the people think that quantum physics, metaphysics and astrophysics is actually modern science but Kanad, uh, he was a 6th century scientist of Vaisheshika school, one of the 6 systems of Indian philosophy. His original name was Aulukya. He got the name Kanad because even as a child he was interested in very minute particles called Kana. His atomic theory can be matched to any modern atomic theory. According to Kanad, material universe is made up of Kana, that is atom which cannot be seen through any human organ. These cannot be further subdivided. Thus, they are indivisible and indestructible. This is of course, as you may be knowing, what the modern atomic theory also says. So he gave the theory of atoms in the 6th century, much before then Einstein, Newton or any other modern scientist. Now we'll move to our next example. That is Sushrata Rishi. He is well known in medicinal uh, particular things. And Sushrata was pioneer in the field of surgery. He considered surgery as the highest division of the healing arts and least liable to fallacy. He studied human anatomy with the help of a dead body. In Sushrata Samhita, over 1100 diseases are mentioned, including fevers of 26 kinds, jaundice of 8 kinds, and urinary complaints of 20 kinds. Over 760 plants are described. All parts, roots, bark, juice, resin, flowers, etc. were used. Cinnamon, sesam, peppers, caradam, ginger are household remedies even today. So Sushrat was very good doctor and very good surgeon of that particular time. And even the whole world of surgery actually admired it right now also. Now we will come to our next uh, examples that is books on varied Sanskrit knowledge. As we mentioned earlier that there are people who think that there are, there are only religious things in Sanskrit text but it is not true. Now we'll discuss about how much varied Sanskrit knowledge is. So we are reading some examples here. Bharat Muni's Natya Shastra. That book actually talks about music, dance and theatre. Chanakya Artha Shastra. It talks about political economics and administration. Panini's Ashtadhyayi talks about Sanskrit grammar. Pingala's Chandrashastra talks about Prasodi. Charak Samhita talks about medicine. Maya Matha talks about architecture. While Nyaya Sutra Gautama talks about logic. And Kama Sutra Vatsayana talks about erotics, paintings and arts. These are just few examples my dear friends. If you go deeper in Sanskrit you can find everything. So this is all about Sanskrit. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and subscribe our channel so that we can make more videos like that. Thank you friends.